That's an inappropriate music sting for a level called Spooky. Things are going to get creepy, and nomenclature is going to get uninspired throughout today's playthrough. However, at the end of the last segment, when we first returned to Windy here, we did see the wasps making off with the bees hive once again. And there's only one person who can solve that conundrum. We should check in with the queen, who is going to be very upset that she's been robbed once again. Oh, 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 it's you, Mr. Squirrel. I'm so happy to see you again. Oh, really? I'm happy to see you. Hey, where's the hive gone? Oh, that's just the point. They've stolen it again. And I don't know what to do. If my husband hasn't returned yet, he's a fiend. If he were here, he'd sort them out. It's just going to have to be somebody else. Oh, really? And who would that be this time, I wonder? Well, you did help us, John. And I don't know who to talk to. Okay, okay. But what's in it for me? Well, uh, uh, money? Yeah, but it'll have to be double last time. Uh, double? Uh, okay, yeah. Treble. Uh, triple. Okay, get my heart back. Okay, I'll get it back. But where is it? Just follow the sides again. But you'll have to go a bit further. It was a deep insurgency mission this time. It won't be as easy, I can tell you. Really? Deep insurgency? Hmm. Quadruple. What? Oh, well, okay, fair enough. Oh, it's, hey, look, this looks quite nice over there. I think I'll go over here. Okay, okay, come back. Come back. Quadruple. Uh, that'll be $200. Hang on a sec. My math isn't that good. But I seem to think it was $400. Okay. Go on, then. We are exploiting a Down Otter Luck Monarch for tons of cash. 400 bucks. Significantly more than we've ever received from any single thing in this game. And it's going to be hard-earned. That 400 bucks is commensurate with how difficult this next thing is to how difficult all the previous $100 tasks have been. But when we complete it, we'll have $2,200. Hooray. Money is meaningless. You don't spend it. It's just a check. It's jiggies. But, uh, whatever. We get to go inside the, wa the um, wasp's nest, I've been calling it. It looks like a hive. It's got honeycombs. It's dripping with honey down the walls. It's... It's bee-themed, but it's a wasp's nest. Don't worry about it. They didn't hire professional entomologists the way they should have for this game and every video game, but maybe in the Conquer sequel, we'll get to see proper wasp representation. For now, we're going to see what it's like inside the bee's nest. This much is accurate to, uh, entomology. Bees nests do have chain guns inside. And you can use them as a first-person shooter segment to gun down so many obnoxious, constantly strafing, flying enemies. I just do an endless stream of figure eights all over the screen. Controls are super weird. The lightest tap of the analog stick can send you swerving wildly. But when the wasps attack, they have to do it in a straight line directly towards you. And their icon turns red on the minimap. You might not have enough time to turn the turret towards the attacking wasp when that happens, but if you do, free easy kill. Big if. A lot of big ifs. 
So that was all free. I still got hit. That segment was still completely free. Because the remaining segment is much more difficult. Look at the minimap. There are wasps coming out from every direction. About as many in this single wave than there were in the three previous waves combined. And they're all random distances away from each other. Swerving randomly. You can take a ton of damage right here. Getting a bit lucky. What I like to do here is just spin the turret around. Get as many people as I can and see if I can spot any people that are charging. If you get hit, they enter the hitbox of the turret briefly. So typically they will explode as they are hitting you. So we are coming to the end of the segment. It is a good thing I practiced it so much. Otherwise it would have been nigh impossible. Hurry, hurry! I think there's a bit of a lull in the waves! Hop out and carry the hive now! Quickly! No time to lose! Okay. That is the end of that. Bear in mind what we're looking at right now, this screen. I'm going to reference it again shortly. But first... We do need to do this part again. Hey! Some wise guys try to steal our nice new hive again! It's the same little bastard! Come on, boys! Want again? Let's get it, boss! Yeah, let's get it! Uh, again? The exact same three wasps as before. Coming to get us in exactly the same manner. And they all keep saying again as they're doing it to just lampshade the fact that this is totally redundant. This segment could have been skipped. This probably could have been a cutscene, but whatever. It's not a cutscene. This part is difficult because the camera's, like, behind you. So it is possible to still die after doing the extremely difficult turret section. I believe the checkpoint is after the wasp wasps have all been killed by the turret. However, if it's your last life and you game over at that point, I think you do have to restart it all from scratch. Could be mistaken, hopefully I'm mistaken, but that's my recollection of how this works out. Chew on this, buzz suckers. Thank you, Mr. Squirrel. Once again, I would like to thank you for your good service and noble contribution to the bee community. I somewhat begrudgingly present you with these. Hey, somebody come for us! Who oh, wants some of us those? <gasps> yeah, most fun do it. <laughs> I hope that's the last thing that happens to us. What could possibly go wrong now? Here's to a wonderful year! Just... Tempting fate there, Queen. Queen who did not allow us to use the rocket launchers that are apparently built into the bee's hive. That would have made things a little easier. But I'm glad I got that segment in one. A little harder than it looks, but once you can do it once, it is honestly the sort of thing you can do pretty much every time you play it. I don't know why. It's nightmarishly difficult the first time you do it, but afterwards, there's a weird mastery of it. Somehow. Let's introduce ourselves to one more bug, and then I'll explain the thing I was talking about with the first person segment. Worms aren't really bugs, but they're bug adjacent. 
so we need to fly past them. Otherwise, they're going to grab me, and you're probably going to see that because uh, they have no tell for where they pop out of the ground. I kind of hate these worms. So this is going to take a while. Now, the first person segment. This is a very, very late generation N64 release. The 21st century was not a good time to be putting out N64 games. But that is when Conker's Bad Fur Day was initially released. So, you would expect the expansion pack to be required. The thing, the chip that you actually put into the console, which increases the memory capacity and allowed for better graphics, higher resolution. It was famously required for another Rareware game, Donkey Kong 64. So required, in fact, that they packaged it with the game. Because it was a brand new release. That was the only way to guarantee that people would be able to play their game. Conker's Bad Fur Day does not function at all if you have an expansion pack installed. You have to remove it in order to play the game. So, the uh, first person segment is one of the reasons why further elaboration to follow. There you go. Now what? Huh. Wanna go for a ride? Um, uh, not really. Not really what? A ride. A ride, yeah. Let's go for a ride. <laughs> uh, let's not. This is tank controls. So we can control left and right, but from this like top-down perspective, and it's inverted in a weird way. This doesn't control well at all. But I think I got it. been out for some time. It's night. Hmm. You got conked out for so long that it's now dark and some would say spooky out. <gasps> Terrifying, but it sets a mood, that's for sure. That's another one of those beginner trap segments. You're going to fall off the mountain the first time you do that, and have to do it all again. Oh, no. Guess I'm not going back that way. Yep, gotta find another way out. Only way through is past a bunch of swimming and a creepy castle. So, when you have the expansion pack installed in your console, it increases the resolution output. That proved to be a problem for the turret segment. The sprite for the guns in the turret would render like halfway up the screen because it was also, it was still rendering at the usual resolution. Even though the rest of the screen was a wider resolution. Causing that graphical bug and several others, but that's believed to be the main reason the expansion pack was uh, disabled for use with Conker's Bad Fur Day. Because this game was rather slapped together. We're very lucky it came out at all. Anyway, there's an invisible wall here. We should absolutely be able to fly past this, despite the strong current. But no, we just stop here. Gonna have to find another way. For example, completing an entire difficult level. Just so that our helicopter tail will work. Sort of. Here's the catfish again. And Greg. Bunch of old friends. 
to make up for our inability to fly past an arbitrary barrier. I don't bloody believe it. They've got fish fresh into the little bastards now. Come here. I'll show them. Oh, I missed the little f again. Ha, I got your number, mate. It's down to two for you. Ah, there's a wanna. <laughs> yes, not long for you now, you little prick. A wanna, referring to a catfish who only has one life left to live. Out of their nine. It was actually, like, clever foreshadowing to have introduced the catfish after Greg said that he hates cats and their multiple lives. It was all built up to this joke here, which makes no sense because we're not in the underworld or anything, but cats wouldn't be in the underworld. They have nine lives. Wouldn't be there yet anyway. Big door. Bats on it. Can't be pushed open. Fortunately, the current pushes us towards this gate here. And this gate has a switch. Which opens that gate. A pointless little time waster. Like, the current literally pushes you over here. There's nothing to figure out. If you put the controller down, it will basically solve this for you. But then you have to replay this whole area. Like I said, time waster. It's fine, though. I like looking at this area. I like horror-themed levels, and this is what we're in for. Because this is a parody of video games. And horror video games have always been popular. Why not make a parody of those as well? Now when we meet Greg again, he's got, uh... A little prize for us. Oh, you again. Why don't you piss off? Can't you see I'm busy? I suppose you want to go up there now, do you? Where there's lots of money, no doubt. One of those rich ancestors of yours. Bloody undead. Unbloody dead. I mean, it's even worse than bloody cats. Undead. What's the bloody point? Um, you may be needing a bit of help. So I've got this. I hate the undead. Hate them. The only thing that kills them. Slap to the head. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, it's better than a pissing frying pan, that's for sure. Take it. That's it. Piss off. Hmm. Shotgun. Yeah. Don't like the sound of zombies, though. Still, if it gets on his nerves, then that's all right by me. And what was that about an ancestor? Undead ancestor. Hmm. Well, if he's undead, then technically that makes him kind of dead. Which means I should get the inheritance. I mean, how bad can a handful of dead people be? They're dead. Well, undead. Now, well, let's see. Shotgun. I think it's one of those bee-pressing moments, don't you? Hunker will do any pain-in-the-ass chore if it means money. By the way, <clears throat> we have $2,210. The barrel at the top of the, um, the hill in the center of Windy, that requires $2,110. You can miss $100 worth of cash pickups throughout the entire game up to that point. Otherwise, you are blocked from proceeding. So basically, you have to 100% it to get where you need to go. I don't know which specific hundred dollars you might want to skip to optimize your uh, access to the rest of the game. Our controls do change once we have a gun out. The camera controls become strafing controls, which is awkward the first time you get it, and you're probably going to walk yourself right off the dock. We can just put the shotgun away. Banjo-Tooie is noted for having a surprisingly good first-person shooter segment. Because it was made by Rare. Rare was also the makers of GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. 
They're known for also making very, very good FPS games. Conquer wasn't so lucky, despite coming out years later. It did do a good job of making the zombies both cute and disgusting. But we still have no aiming. So it's one blind shot to hope for the best. Oh, I hate how this is going. Also, my health is already reduced, so this is, uh... This is hopeless. Conquer joins his zombie ancestors. And briefly popped his eyes back open, as though he were being resurrected as a zombie. Creepy. This much is to be expected. In fact, despite having as many lives as I do, I expect to game over here. Not necessarily in this room, but somewhere near this room. While you're aiming, you cannot move. But you have to aim, because you require headshots, nothing else works. Uh, you need to get a lot of distance, because once the zombies uh, hit your scent, they can charge very, very quickly. This is important, though. Mrs. I see nuts. Mr. C man. Clever. And Mr. R soul. That's what I never heard before. Very humorous. You know your British slang. Mrs. This is important, zombies. Leave me alone. I have crude humor to cram in the face of some kind of audience. I absolutely cannot afford to miss a word of it. It's like they didn't want me to see their gross jokes. Let's clear this area out with the shotgun a little bit. Uh, P stain and one uh, B floppy. I B floppy. Well, that one's half baked. I see nuts. C man. I didn't realize there were so many of these. I honestly thought it was just the R soul one. Turns out, different texture on almost every single grave. For some reason, they only repeated one. Go for some headshots. They are already in a bad position. There we go. Shot to the chest, which is only good for knocking them back slightly. Uh, that's IB Floppy and uh, P Stain again. So, yeah, that is also a repeat. It's the hard to read repeat. The stereo sound is quite good for an N64 game. It really does help you to locate where the zombies are. And we arbitrarily need 12 kills to advance. A lot of arbitrary shit happening at this point in the game. They sort of just lost the thread of how these uh, platformer adventures are supposed to work, where, like, doing things advances you to the next area. No, in this game, like, the next area unlocks because you completed the last area. No in-game explanation, just meta-explanations. 
This whole game has the appearance of being open world and collectathon esque. It is a blatant and complete lie. Couldn't be more linear. That zombie is spawning rather close. So I'm gonna get my distance. Hope that it was enough. I have one HP at this point. Before I zombify myself, I'm dead. So this segment's a pain in the ass. It's probably not the best place to go for a shot, but... Someone is spawning very nearby. Yeah, there it is. Did it. Damn it. That was only a brief cutscene to indicate that I had done it. At least dodging the zombies to get over to Greg. Should be nice and easy. And then I'll open the door. Let's advance. Ah, not bad, I suppose. That's another 12 souls. Right, come on. In you go. And I think you'll find that you're the one who'll be needing a will. Inheritance. <laughs> you gotta pay the soul toll. Now we can go into another long winding pathway. What's the worst that could happen? More worms. Indestructible worms. Hate these worms. Go on, do the thing. There it is. They sniff like bloodhounds for some reason. But they are tethered to the ground so they can't reach very far. There, once again, is absolutely no indication of where the worms will emerge. Um, long way to go before I get grabbed. It's always surprising when you don't get thrown over the edge. This is a long winding path specifically to guarantee you die every time you get caught by a worm. But they throw you back the way they grabbed you. Let me do something real quick. Throw myself into the abyss a few times. So I wouldn't want to get out of here without a game over. We have more game overs to see. Let's see the default game over. Intentionally. And then regret it when I get comboed by worms to death momentarily, but this is what it looks like when you game over and leave a corpse behind to be discovered. Mm. Yes. Much better. I won't be spilling my milk anymore. Yes, boss. And we won't be getting the duck. Bit of a horrible fate for old Conker. Eternity as a table leg. Just as science promised. Fortunately, the weasels have no problem finding our corpse at the bottom of this ravine. Hopefully I don't leave any more corpses at the bottom of this ravine. Because this is just a memorization test. I have failed already. That did hurl me just far enough to go over the edge. That's what happens 99% of the time when you get grabbed by the worms. But yeah, it is also implied that Conquer 
was a table leg in the first game over that we saw. In which you couldn't see Conker. All you could see was the carton of milk saying that Conker was missing. And the king relatively unperturbed. Yes, barely still alive. Fortunately, if you get grabbed by a worm and survive, you still get to see where the worm was. I think this is the last challenge. Giant worm. And a second worm. To juke you out. So it's simple, but it's trial and error. That section can be super irritating. Again, now our reward. An unbelievably long cutscene. Such a long cutscene. You're going to think it's over three or four times over the course of this cutscene, but it won't be. Some of those times you're going to wish it was over. But here we go. Let us get it over with. Welcome to my house. Please, enter of your own free will, and bring with you some of the happiness that is so evident in your face, and so lacking in my own. Oh, he's not getting there. Okay, I'll just cross this threshold here. Hmm, I'm sure if that's of some significance. I don't think what it is. Anyway, my <laughs> fair do. What? Nothing. So, uh, seldom have visitors in these parts. Uh, what being out here in the middle of nowhere? On such a cold and gloomy night. Pray, follow me. You look as if you're in need of sustenance. And I have many things to eat and drink. Pray, follow. Oh, okay. Food, yeah. Hey, can I be sick of chocolate anyway? This way. As you can see, the house is in some uh, state of repair. We're having a few refurbishments doing at the moment, and I was planning to have all this not through to make one big, uh, but anyway, well, I think we'll just stick to the conservatory for the present. Ah, in my dining room. <laughs> Oh, very nice. More wine? I don't mind if I do, thank you. Oh. 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 I, I, you're not drinking then? No. I never drink wine. <laughs> so, um, um, Who's this guy here? He looks, uh, he looks like you. Hmm. My, uh, forefather. He was a crusader in a war of long ago. Went with the allies, with the squirrels and the panthers. That union, alas, was not successful. Yeah, and he had really stupid teeth as well. Didn't they have any dentists back then? Yeah. Who are you to criticize me or my ancestors, whose blood runs into these veins? You are not of noble birth, and never will be. <sighs> Pray accept my apologies. Whenever you talk about my ancestors, I get uh, somewhat touchy. Oh, that's all right. I know how it is. Family. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you been here long? Mm. About 300 years. Really? <laughs> it's quite a big family, then. No, it's just me. Oh. What's that noise? Ah, uh, 
the children of the night. What sweet music they make. Music? The howling. <sighs> what is that noise? Sounds like somebody's braying on the door. <laughs> they don't like you either, I take it. Oh, shit. The villagers again. It sounds like there is more of them this time. This could be your lucky night, Conker. I was going to kill you and drink your blood. But now I think I'm needing your help. Terry, come here. Um, uh, can we just go back a bit there? That drinking my blood bit? What's all that about? I said, come here. And familiar, yes. I think you are my great, 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 great grandson, Conco. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Welcome indeed. I have a little task for you. These little uh, villagers. Occasionally pop up to my establishment for have a little fun and see if they can kill me. It's never worked yet. As you can see, I've had a few minor alterations to the house. They have the grinder. <laughs> and they have the pumps. And they have some other bits and pieces. It is your duty, your Errand, indeed, the whole point of your existence as of this day is to fetch me the villagers, put them in the grinder, and let me feed. You may feed too if you wish, but only later. Well? Oh yes, I forgot. You can only speak like what you are. A bat. <laughs> Fell chop chop. Fetch me the villagers. I am hungry. Conquer is a blind house bat now. So, that cutscene really ground the pace of this whole level to a halt. So much to comment on, so much that I can't because cutscene just wouldn't shut up to give me a chance to talk. Oh well, we're bad now. We have sonar powers and poop powers, because it's still Conquer. Our poops knock people unconscious, so that we can grab them and take them to the grinder. Mulching people into empowering paste for our ancestor who has turned us into a vampire ourselves, which is pretty neat. This is a cool idea for a segment. Maybe better without the extremely long cutscene to set it all up, but what do you know? We get there anyway, and then we have a good time. Music's fantastic. Uh, controls? Leave a bit to be desired. I believe it is not the poop powers that render people vulnerable to being grabbed, but rather the sonar. The poop powers just make it easier to grab them. And bats are kind of known for guano. It's a useful byproduct of bats. So as much as you don't think of bats as shitting all over the place, they sort of do. It's not just Conker being gross. Conker is being gross. Don't worry about that. Oh, sniped. Now we are very easy to combo, obviously. And there are no opportunities for health refills. Throughout this entire segment. And if you die, 
You gotta start from scratch. You move forward by holding B and backward by holding A. There's a reverse mechanic. It's like driving a car, but you're flying. When you're holding a victim, they drag you down as they are significantly larger than the bat we're playing as. So you gotta constantly lift yourself upwards. And the further up you are, the more likely you are to dodge incoming spears, which is clearly necessary. Need to get a lot of villagers. I don't think we need every single one, but our host has quite a thirst. Because he didn't want to share in the wine. We can also stop in place to hover using the R button. Which is probably going to be useful useful once I knock someone down. No one down. And if you stop moving ever, you are in a lot of danger. As you've seen. Getting comboed is quite possible. So this can be an extremely fun little minigame. Or it can be like what we're seeing. There's not really a lot of reason why it goes one way or the other, unfortunately. Let's take a straight line. You do have a bit of a cooldown on the amount of feces you can produce. And there are audio cues to indicate when you've landed a hit. I think that was me landing a hit, yeah. Okay, it seems like I wasn't able to grab that one. At this point, taking a death would be the best choice. That was partially intentional. Alright. Back to bat business. Yep. Reversing myself accidentally. With that old A button. One of the issues is that this is our top flying speed. enemies and run around very quickly. I assume these gray furred creatures that look very much like squirrels are meant to be chipmunks. It turns out Barry is supposed to be a chipmunk. So despite significant biological similarities to Conquer. They don't have tails, so therefore they are chipmunks. There we go, this should be clean, lined up. I did not get... The squeak sound. The squeak sound indicates we have succeeded. There we go. Unfortunately, your flight path always puts you beyond your target after you hit them. If only there were a way to aim downwards while defecating. Wouldn't that be a gameplay improvement of some kind? killed one. This time we gotta kill two to move on. Good shot. But you still got backup. Oh, I can't believe I failed to grab on there. So we'll back off. Whip back around. 
Try again. That's a hit. Yeah. Now you just don't want to get hit again. Let's run the balcony here. And get got. Another special delivery for great, 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 etc. The wiki says that the villagers are supposed to be squirrels, apparently. So you don't expect consistency from a game like this. Barry is a confirmed chipmunk. But perhaps she's the only one. Despite having a lot of design similarities to the gray squirrel types. But there's room enough for gray squirrels and chipmunks in this world. And bats. And occasionally humans. We found the uh, people who are using the giant garbage cans in Bat's Tower. Clearly, it was Booga and uh, Jugga. The two humans that exist in this world. Besides cavemen. Who are also human, but are like... Tiny... Little animal-type humans. I want to go out this way. Out to this beautiful courtyard. This is a good way to get your bearings as to the layout of the overall mansion. Which can be a very important thing to do. I don't like this duo here. So I will leave them to their business. Clog this guy. The hedge maze itself makes it much easier to isolate a target. Without risk of being hit by spears while you're doing so. Oh boy. Pretty sure that target who almost got me is themselves isolated. You would hope that this would be the last one, but uh, I highly doubt it. Even as well fed as our ancestor is getting. Yep, one more string. Keeping him elevated. Before he suffers the same fate he has put so many others through. Look at how inflated he has become. This game will hit every fetish it possibly can by the time it's over, I promise. Including things that you'd rather not think of as fetishes. No judgment, though. Just conquer. Should be able to get you out of here. Very good. So many people out here in the courtyard. Barely dodging spears. They do lead their shots pretty well. I think it'll take two more. As in this one, and then an additional one. I don't do pretty well with the ones in the courtyard. Conker, again, turns his view to observe potential victims. It's a bit of a hint help you catch people who are off screen. This is risky. Uh, I can't believe I got that grab. When you touch the ground, you bounce off of it. Only the exact moment when you touch the ground is um, capable of picking up victims. So that was a close one. I like did a sine wave arc that happened to grab the victim miraculously. This should be it, though.
That doesn't happen to you every day. Oh. Ah, more zombies. Time for the double barrel boy. Hopefully for the last time. Uh, you said it there, Conker. There's your transformation fetish covered. And now we have no particular indication of where to go. But that uncle guy is dead. Seems like good news. This is where we want to go, into the library. That we've never really seen before. There are bats here as well. Maybe we'll make some new friends since we're a bat now. Conker doesn't make friends very well. He also doesn't make chocolate very well. And there are, are like I said, no chocolate pickups anywhere in the mansion. Here we go. This is not a shotgun, you'll note. We get an alternate firearm for taking out bats. Not that one, though. You can take them out in whatever order you want. But they will attack in a designated order. I got the one in the other corner. Saving myself a cycle. Legit did not expect to be able to do that, but there we go. That clears out this area. But why did we clear out this area? There are also zombies here. I'm going to take my chances with zombies rather than fight them. I might regret this, but we can hear the zombies crawling around on the ground floor. Don't want to mess with that area yet, though. We did have to clear it out in advance as part of an upcoming thing, and the only way to know that is foreknowledge. Which I fortunately have. Uh-oh. I'm gonna bring myself right about here. Get out the double-barreled boy. Pretty good snapshot. The extremely low FPS also makes it very hard to aim. There are a lot of circumstances where... Fine-tuning is literally impossible. Because your camera is swerving at an interval that is simply too high to get the precise target that you need due to the very, very, very low FPS. Which drops as soon as you bring out the shotgun. Uh-oh. That's already coming my way. The bats work like the wasps. Once they get a real beat on you, they charge. Giving you a nice, clean shot. However, they move much more slowly than the, than the uh, wasps, and much less frequently. Making it way easier to peg them down. You'd think that would mean the bats offer no challenge whatsoever. And that is true until you grab this key. Then your movement capability is reduced. And the bats will all charge at the same time. And they are guaranteed to knock this key out of your hand unless they are all dead, including the ones in the library. But now we have set ourselves a nice clean path. To escort the living key with eyeballs. All the way back to the door. The door, which is locked three times, and still did absolutely nothing to keep the villagers out. Keeps us in, though. If only we could harness the power of the zombies. 
zombies tend to be pretty good at knocking down barricaded doors. According to the movies I've seen. And this game is overburdened with movie references. Dracula's design, clearly based off of that of the Coppola Dracula, as portrayed by Gary Oldman. I did have to look that up, though. Which goes against my policy of not looking shit up for this game, particularly not movie references. I got enough on my hands looking up the, like, game information without having to worry about movie references. As I am no movie buff. You're on your own with the other movie references that I'm sure I have completely overlooked at this playthrough. So that segment was mostly just a puzzle that inexplicably permits you to get the next step in the puzzle when you've completed it. The movement of the zombies seems designed specifically to allow you to get around without having to shoot them while you're holding a key. However, it would be wise to thin the herd a little bit at this point. Thought I might have got a long distance headshot. But it definitely seemed like the second one was a clean headshot, which didn't count because the target was too far away. That one definitely not a headshot, but the way his like head flew back on impact strongly suggested a successful headshot that just didn't count due to distance. I think that gray guy there is not a zombie. And as soon as he goes around the corner, he disappears. I saw him in my practice run as well. And I don't know what he is. Probably a movie reference. But he doesn't bother you. He just runs away. And he doesn't shamble like a zombie. So he's probably not supposed to be a zombie. But these definitely are. Use the hedge maze to attack from safety. However, the zombies are slightly shorter than the hedge maze. So when they get this close, you can't hit them anymore. You can sometimes clip the edge of their big old shibby head hitboxes. Fire a warning shot just to get my bearings. So it's not much of a warning. It's more of a threat shot. That guy shouldn't bother me if I go the other way around. However, there are no health pickups here, so better to not let myself get cornered when I pick up that key. All that will happen will be that I drop the key and then have to return to its starting location to collect it again. That zombie should actually not bother me. Famous last words, I've tempted fate like this before, but... We know the path. Back to the front door. That could have been one of the few villagers that I did not take to the count during the uh, victim delivery segment. Because you don't take all of them. Maybe they just don't despawn the ones who survive. And they just run around. You'd think they would still have the AI to hurl spears at you. Maybe it's some kind of scripted thing. Maybe it's 
weird information that's still loaded in when it shouldn't be. Anything's possible. Oh, that is too close for comfort. But it seems like this is designed, so you don't have to kill the zombies. You can just swerve past them. They're meant to jump out around corners and stuff. It's actually kind of neat. This section is very, very annoying to figure out in the first place, but once you have it, pretty much figured out. I can appreciate the design, at least. I won't speak for anyone else. It is once again annoying how arbitrary it all is. The first time you do it. I picked the wrong hallway. Also, I guess we should get a last clean look at all the murals all over the place. Um, I think we could get across here, but it would be very, very unsafe. We've been doing so well for so long. So I'm gonna head back to where the zombies are. Best place to look at the murals is the dining room. Don't look at the suit of armor. It's a 2D model that looks like garbage. Here's the dining room. We have the uh, ancestor of our ancestor. We've got some weird, like, werewolf squirrel, maybe? And a fancy, presumably vampire hunter squirrel. And then... A bunch of empty picture frames. Like it's the death level from Castlevania 1. For some reason, you fight death. In a gigantic art gallery. In which most of the art is simply missing for some reason. Should get us over there. Sure, there are zombies everywhere, but who cares? This leads to the bottom floor, though. I don't want to be on the bottom floor. How about you? Where you lead? The grinder will, unsurprisingly, murder you. Just as it murdered those villagers. This will definitely lead us where we need to go. Oh, check out that music sting when you get hit by zombies. That's good stuff. And context sensitive. Easily missed. Now we are in the part of the upper level. I can actually get to the ladder I dropped for myself. There it is. Sure, there's a much faster and easier way to get back up here, but... I don't know what it is. Now we have almost full health again. Flying over here. Do the duck super jump. Fly across the platform like it's the very first tutorial level of the game. To find the terrifying bone switch. Bone switch is ready. For us to grab it and yank it and move on with our lives. That was a bad jump. I could have hurled myself down to the bottom floor, possibly lethally. Might have just dropped myself right on the grinder. So, 
once again trying to find the fastest way to where I'm going. It's kind of clever how they designed this to be the biggest possible pain in the ass to navigate. With different areas that can only be accessed if you are, like, not holding keys or in bad form. So that the various times that you come here, either while holding keys or while in bad form, will play out differently, despite the environment being exactly the same. Different experience through the same area. Fortunately, the final key is ridiculously easy to grab and deliver. So easy that they probably shouldn't have bothered and just made it two keys to unlock the door. Or made all the keys this easy. I also wouldn't have complained about that. But, mercifully, the final key brings us to a nice, easy conclusion. Right. Finally. Oh yeah, I forgot about those guys. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Barrel Trip Mark II. Let's us squish zombies, which is pretty great. It controls a little better now that we have, like, camera controls. The locked camera while descending the hill from the windmill is abysmal. But this is going to test how good our camera controls are. Because, obviously, the slightest slip and you are dead here. Very narrow pathway. I'm gonna take it a bit slowly, if at all possible. After a while, you start building so much momentum that you can't even attempt to switch the camera. Just swerve wildly and hope for the best. And the best has occurred. Another one of those segments that is a beginner's trap where it is virtually impossible to do your first time, and then once you do it once, you're probably going to get it every single time. This segment, once again, so easy, I don't even know if you can fail it here. But I don't want to find out. And then... For some reason, this is not going to make sense, but... We use the barrel as a flotation device which we can roll so quickly that it takes us upstream <laughs> to the other side of this current that we couldn't bypass earlier. All this work to get here. I wonder what would happen if I jumped out past the current. Would the invisible wall be back? <laughs> I'd rather not find out. More dancing flowers. They're not really, uh, putting their heart into it. They haven't been observed in so long that they're not dancing too hard. But it's a bit of foreshadowing for where we're going. Money over here. We finally get a nice chunk of change at the bottom of a waterfall. So, you want some great stuff? <laughs> This is the money we saw, all the way back, at the very beginning of the game. Behind the waterfall, finally accessible. All we had to do was beat the spooky level. Here's the gargoyle's corpse. It has also been here, since we knocked it off the bridge. Would've head down and uh, seen it back at the time. There was simply no reason. And Beardy still passed out drunk. And high on helium. So there we go, we made it full circle. And we acquired... $100 for playing through the entirety of the spooky level. 
may be the slightest bit dissatisfying when I frame it that way. But that is the big conclusion of Spooky. Next time, we will leave the tutorial area once again and move on to a brand new chapter with $2,310 in pocket. Our job here is done. Today we conquered... Where is it? When I heard there was a level called Bat's Tower, I figured that's the level where you turn into a bat in a creepy tower and it's the whole Dracula parody. But in actuality, it's much later in the game. Bizarrely enough. Anyway. Mr. Death, Count Bachula, Zombies, and also way back in Windy. The last two segments, another Mr. Barrel and Wasp's Revenge. That's it for Conker's Bad Fur Day. Take it away with Live and Reloaded, future post-commentary me. Thank you, past me. So we started this segment with the turret segment against the many wasps. Let's take a look at the turret in Live and Reloaded. It has become a gun throne on which Conker can sit and blast all the wasps. Mechanically, nothing has changed. However, they do add this ricochet effect, and I have absolutely no idea if the ricochets off the wall are capable of hitting wasps. If not, this is exactly the same thing with a fresh coat of paint. Then we come to the worms. When they emerge from the ground, there's a shower of confetti for some weird reason. The first one doesn't activate its cutscene until you get too close to escape. So you basically get one guaranteed hit. And then the rest of them are visible even when they're not emerged. You can see their mound of dirt, making it very easy to dodge them. Then the barrel ride is unchanged except for the fact that you can control the camera. Now after nightfall, we're going to enter this cave, see if you can spot what changes when we get to the other side. It's subtle. But things look a little bit different than they did in Bad Fur Day. Conker has spontaneously grown a full head of human hair, as well as a black leather outfit that is splattered with blood. And the river, which was normal water on the other side, is pure blood on this side. Here's more of the porcelain doll monsters, a unique addition to this game. They are functionally identical to the goblins in the hamster balls. But they look appropriate to this region. Got a nice blood waterfall, and it's not the only one. The outer area is also a Venice, but with rivers of blood. There's the slaughtered lamb, the local pub, I guess. Across the Blood River is a store called Coffins R Us. A little more clear what they were going for with that sign. And in this area, the gate is still closed. But this half of our nice little medieval village has plenty more blood fountains. And the gate we're going to have to pass through is now shaped like a giant stone demon. After we head through there, we'll be gifted a more appropriate zombie killing weapon, which will be put to good use in the graveyard. We're gonna lay to rest Mr. Bellen and Mrs. Fanny Batter, and others, whose joke names we've already read. Our weapon of choice this time is a blunderbuss with a laser sight for easier aiming. You hold down the trigger to aim, then release it to fire. Missing the headshot actually blows a hole through the center of the zombie. And then you can blast their legs off as usual. You can also blast their arms off. Heads don't splatter quite as satisfyingly, but overall, good stuff. One last joke name. Mr. C. Hunt. Surely a deceased pirate. Anyway, the bone worms still have a lot of their organs left over. Just all covered in flesh. More importantly... They are destructible, making this segment absolutely trivial, even with the addition of porcelain monsters. 
who also require a headshot to die. Body shots still don't work. But uh, you can just run and gun through this. Not too fast though, because they will still grab you if you get in their radius. During the excruciating six minute cutscene, Conker is going to say that this pilgrim guy with the buck teeth is the one who needs dentistry. Conker has buck teeth himself, and the guy with the fangs is not visible in this scene. So I guess Conker has a bit of self-hatred. And when he turns into a bat, he still sort of looks like himself. He has the same fur pattern. Not the black fur pattern like his ancestor. But while we're a bat, we'll get to check out one of the funniest and grossest changes in the whole game. A first-person aiming camera for our guano shots. Meaning we are aiming through Conker's colon for accurate feces flinging. And there we go hit our target. We can also land as a bat and crawl around to make picking up the characters easier. Sort of. It also controls the same way that swimming controls, which I've noted is awkward. Here's the transformation back into Conquer, which looks horrible. And almost all of it is done off screen because it's just two character models clipping into one another. This part I just had to highlight because I find it unbearable. This is the one shooting gallery in the entire game to which they did not add a targeting reticle. And the focal point from where our arrows shoot is covered by Conker's head, so it's super hard to aim, and they added a reload animation every third shot. So that sucked. It took forever. I hate it. I don't know why they did that. The hallway where we deliver all the keys now has a dead rising number of zombies in it. And some of them have been scaled up or down. There are all sorts of different sizes for some reason. This dirt path right here was a brick wall on the N64 version, which is a very minor change that makes for a tiny little shortcut, but that's not why I kept this clip in. What I actually wanted to show off was the black voids are now roiling masses of scary Edvard Munch ghost faces, which is a slight improvement. Finally, after opening the front door, Conker insists on riding the barrel, even though we don't need it, because we can get past the bone worms very easily now. And it's very hard to get to the barrel, but super satisfying to crush all the millions of zombies. That's it for changes that are specific to this level, but we did also see the standard game over during this playthrough. So I just wanted to show that they changed that to have Conker visibly weeping, looking miserable and pathetic for the rest of his days. A fittingly horrific fate for this horror-themed level. It's not always clear why we're doing what we're doing in this game. Turns out it's all to prevent Conker from suffering a lifetime of table leg torture. He doesn't even realize how much danger he's in. They did a lot of cool visual redesigns here in the spooky chapter, and I have a feeling that Live and Reloaded is going to continue to shine. Because next time, it's war.